Hi there, viewers and listeners. Welcome back to 118. Hello. We've got Justin Samir here with us again, the crew, the full crew. We're all here. <laughs> and uh, I felt a bit like that when we all turned up. Oh, fucking here we are again. Yeah. Another fucking week staring at YouTube mugs. Yeah. Anyway. We are going to be talking about. <laughs> I think you were going to say something then, Samir. I was, <laughs> but I bet not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we are going to be talking about Tango and Cash tonight. 1989 movie release. And um, yeah, it's going to be fun, I hope. <laughs> Let's talk about it. synopsis okay so this is about two los angeles narcotic detectives police officers and they are incredibly good at their job both of them one of them is a very sort of high class sort of very well dressed very by the book type of officer and the other one is sort of the downtown los angeles you know right in the thick and dirt of it and grime of it all but they're very very good and they're pissing off a drug baron a drug lord they're really starting to get on his nerves and so take away from the bottom line. So this drug lord wants to set them up and just do away with them. Um, but he doesn't want to kill them outright. He wants a bit of plausible deniability. So this whole um, conspiracy is uh, is contrived and it takes off from there, really. So let's talk about the cast. So we have Sylvester Stallone in this, who plays uh, Tango, Raymond Tango, Ray Tango. We have Kurt Russell plays Gabriel Cash. Terry Hatcher makes an appearance in this. If you remember from our last review, that's kind of the connection to why we're doing this. She plays uh, Kiki Tango, Catherine Tango, which is Ray's sister in the film. Jack Palance, old school actor, he plays the drug baron. Uh, makes quite, I thought quite an impressive appearance. He plays um, a guy called Yves Perret. Brian James. Um, he plays a guy called Requin. Requin? Requin? Yes, that's right. <clears throat> Requin. Um, very, yeah. Uh, we'll probably get into that for the review, but that's um, an, an odd one. Yes. And James, James Hong, he plays uh, a guy called Quan, who is kind of like a henchman. I guess he's like a sort of right-hand man of, of uh, Perret. And I will mention that Mark Alamo, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Alamo, this guy called Lopez, and he's another uh, sort of uh, uh, sub boss, I guess, of the main drug band. And shit happens. So, <clears throat> yeah, got any facts? Sylvester Stallone in this movie has to use uh, normally uses uh, corrective uh, vision contact lenses, <clears throat> but in some of the scenes, he actually used his own um, glasses. It wasn't a, uh, you know, sort of, uh, let's go to the sort of, um, to the sort of actual costume uh, area <laughs> and then basically <laughs> yeah, so get some glasses, glasses, you know what I mean? It was, so, um, that, was, that wasn't the case. There were actually his glasses. And um, the uh, second fact is the original director was actually fired after three months of starting this uh, movie due to the fact he wanted to make it a darker more serious etc who so was the was, original director do you know i unfortunately didn't get that information couldn't find it myself <laughs> what kind of facts are these yeah so it's dubious, isn't it? <laughs> dubious. <laughs> yeah you know that scene where he says i hate danish yeah that line where he says that the reason was that was a joke on his divorce uh to bridget nielsen just recently because oh, obviously right. she's danish yeah. and stuff like that that's so why they played on that Oh, right, excellent. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, num uh, Patrick Swayze actually was going to play Kurt Russell's part at one point, and he actually signed on and was going to do it. And then he goes, "Now, nah, sorry, guys, I don't want to do that." And you're talking about a Bourne connection. One of the other names connected to it was Pierce Brosnan. He was going to play uh, Cash. Can you imagine <clears throat> him playing Cash? No. I don't think Pierce can play Cash. No. Maybe Tango, yes, but not Cash. Uh, if it was Pierce Brosnan, in my view, I think it should have been the other way where, where he plays Tango and Stallone would have had to play Cash uh, if that was the case, because I don't imagine him playing that. 
there's another mention of something. I don't know if you guys remember, but you know they go. Uh, they were going to the court, and uh, he said to um, Tango, Cash said, "By the way, as I'm older than you because of your uh, day, w- which month you were born in." And then he suddenly turns around and goes, "Yeah, but you were born August 1977." There's two connections to that. One in the 60s, mid 60s or late 60s, Kurt Russell actually spent time with Elvis, and he also played Elvis in the late 70s, early 80s. It was a TV movie where he actually plays Elvis. And as we know, the date was mentioned, 9, uh, August the 16th, which is the day that the date that Elvis passed away. And um, there's loads of Elvis connections, like uh, when he goes into the changing room as well. Yeah. He goes, ah, uh, what size are you, Elvis? So that was an actual indirect sort of, Taking the mickey out of him, his own, himself because he had right. played the part quite a few times, and there was quite a few connections there with Elvis Presley as well. Um, Brian James or Brian uh, James played the least convincing British uh, British Cockney. villain in history, Cockney. Mate, he sounded more like an Aussie or uh, in <laughs> some parts and a bit South African. I don't know if you. I'll slash your folk, mate. Yeah, exactly. He sounded more like a, a South African there. Uh, in certain parts, and I thought, I'm sure this guy's not British, and uh, he's American, and the, uh, and guess what? I heard, also found out, Silver Stallone was actually Silver Stallone was actually impressed with his Cockney accent. Yeah. Come on, I think yeah. uh, there's no purpose big... for him to have a British accent. None. No, None it, it didn't add anything, did it? Apart no. from a ridiculous aspect to the character, they could have yeah. just hired a British actor. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but one thing we have to say, and I have to say congratulations to Dick Van Dyke. He's no longer the worst mm-hmm. Cockney accent on uh, in the history of uh, Hollywood. This was the first American movie that got wide release in ex uh, in Soviet blocs. It wasn't ex Soviet blocs, and the USSR. Um, when James Pen, uh, what's his name? James Pencil, Pencil. I can't pronounce the bad guy. Uh, yeah, um, the head mafia boss. Um. Oh, Jack Palance. Jack Palance. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Jack Palance. Yeah. He is of Ukrainian origin, and when this movie was uh, released, obviously it was still the USSR. So he went there, and he was somewhere like equivalent restaurant, a fast food chain or, or restaurant, and suddenly his table was surrounded by all these people because they recognised him from this movie. So he was quite shocked that happened uh, to him. But yeah, the other thing is, you know, when they got that sort of, they're equivalent to Q. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, that was awful. Um, yeah, a guy called Michael J. Pollard played. Yeah, Odin. he was. Yeah, Michael J. Pollard is very famous for Bunny and Clyde. He was very yeah. famous in the sixties, uh, late sixties, early early to mid seventies. Um, yeah. So that truck that they took, if you hear the sound effect carefully, it's the same sound effect as Guy Walker's land speeder in Star Wars 1977. So they used it in 89 when the actual sound was originally used in 77. That tells you something, that that noise or that sound effect was quite modern for the time. Now the final fact is Kirk, Kurt Russell and James Hong were in also together in Big Trouble in Little Big China. Trouble China, yeah. Brilliant movie, yeah. bad that is, by the way, of what I remember of it. I always say all well, these movies are brilliant, and then I watch them again and I'll put them in my final thoughts, what I thought, but mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Big Trouble Little China. Yeah, I, I think I've only watched that film a couple of times, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, same right. Okay, well, yeah, some, some good talking points there. Thanks for that. Justin, you got any decent observations, any continuity stuff? The thing is, is that this film is as was as batshit crazy behind <laughs> the scenes as it yeah. was to watch it. It, you know, we talked about um, Alien Three being a clusterfuck. Yeah. Uh, this, I think, and I didn't think you could top that after watching and reading a lot about that film. I don't think I, I thought that couldn't be topped. This takes it to another mm-hmm. level, right? Um, of behind the scenes chaos. Um, etc. What was lovely about the film uh, behind the scenes was that um, 
uh, Sly and, and Kurt became very, very good friends. They, they were friends beforehand um, because the, the original cast for the film was supposed to be Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, and uh, Sylvester Sloan. That was, the, that was the point. That was the original casting. Uh, but, but Arnold Schwarzenegger, again, didn't, didn't want to do it. Yeah, uh, I don't and, know how that work. Yeah, but they, they didn't appear on screen together until uh, uh, The Expendables, which was over a, a decade later. later. Um, two decades, they had two a, decades they, later. Two decades, yeah, almost. Uh, they had great yeah. fun doing this, apparently. But the director, yeah, one of the directors was Saxon, and they brought on uh, a renowned, uh, almost psychopathic director, apparently, who had, um, which was, I think, Peter Guber and Larry Franco, um, or something um, to that name, or Hubert what? de la Bullier or something. Was it in K- 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 or something like that? No, something the director, like that. The, the director of this film was Andre Konchavlovsky. Yeah. And the writer was a Randy Feldman. Right. Yeah, when I read Andre Konchavlovsky, I thought Andre Konchelsky, you know, he's yeah. played <laughs> Manchester United and Everton. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Apparently he, he, was, he was brought on later on. Uh, there was no ending... Uh, in sight, the script again was being changed every day and refilmed. Uh, Sylvester Sloan was getting on everybody's bloody nerves because he kept his, you know, he had such a massive ego and, you know, kept changing bloody scenes and some of the references in this. They even make reference to fucking Rambo less than yeah, five right, minutes yeah, in. Yeah. And it's just, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, and it was, you know, and the Bond references in it as well. Um, you know, I think you mentioned with Matey Boy Q with, and the car. You know, being a truck, you know, and the oh, and the mice. What the fuck? What was the fucking point <laughs> of, the, of the mice? What? Can I just say something there, Justin? If you remember, I don't know if you do remember, uh, but there was a uh, TV series called V, and I think mice at the time were quite popular. Uh, sort uh, of on I TV know the and... series well. They were aliens. Yeah, yeah, came yeah down, but there yeah, was but an this alien. Is, but... This is what they're trying yeah, to say. But, but... Rats or mice, they made a comeback, didn't they? <laughs> exactly. That's what so anyway, oh, the fact was, that, no, enough mice. You knew why <laughs> the mice were in V. They had a purpose. They got eaten. Yeah. Yeah, but there, there was a purpose here. <laughs> was, trying to say evil people like mice. I loved them. Yeah. yeah, a Rottweiler, you bellend. You're a drug dealer. What are you kissing <laughs> mice for? Buy a couple of Rottweilers. Anyway, <laughs> so it, it was it was utterly utterly chaotic, um, and the, the the observations and the and the continuity uh, follow um, rapidly, almost in in every scene. So I'll go for a couple of them um, from the beginning. In fact, it got so much that I wound the film back and started writing them down on a post-it note because normally Jeez. this remembers them. Um, but I won't run through them all. I'm just going to go through a select few. Right. Mm. So um, at the at when the, obviously the tanker, he uh, unloads his bullets, puts in you know armor piercing rounds or high caliber rounds, whatever the case may be. Um, he shoots the windscreen. The truck comes to a stop, uh, and they come through the windscreen. Shit! Well, <laughs> you know Shit. that dubbing and that bit yeah. as well. Yeah, and and the, yeah, it's one, yes, <laughs> yeah, it was saying something different, <laughs> but. The a windscreen doesn't break like that, but it's not a plate glass. They're not windscreens aren't made of plate glass. You know, they would have just basically hit the windscreen, shattered it, and just fallen back in the truck again. It wouldn't mm. have smashed through the windscreen, you know, for no. him to then go, you know, oh thanks for dropping in. You know. Yeah. Stupid. Um, he makes a reference to Rambo, uh, obviously. Um, and then the matey boy, uh, the baddie, comes up in the car and he's got his arm on the thing and you see a shot through the window and he's going, tango and cash, cash and tango. And then there's a shot of a camera on hit with him on the back seat and all of the windows are just completely milky. You can't see out of them at all. Um, get to see some tits. I only mentioned that because it was similar to the other week where she just kind of looks up with her tits and then she, as they're making love in the mosquito net. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, but in this film, they're in they're in a car. Well, they're going through the car park. Oh yes, they're smashing yeah. into cars. You get the, that woman sort of looks up as if what's going on. You see a nice bit of tit, and then she they carry on. I just I thought of you at that point, Samir. <laughs> oh yeah, when we spent time together, be back off the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yes. With Samir's tits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, tits. Yeah, yeah. Tits. By the um, way, mine are slightly darker though. <laughs> yeah. So we obviously got Terry Hatcher. Um, in this as well, very nice. Yes. Um, 
And what that was a good yes. observation. <laughs> <laughs> nice bottle of Chianti. Oh, Christ, we are struggling, aren't we, now? How many movie <laughs> no, reviews loads. in are we? We're about 39 <laughs> movie reviews in and we're struggling now. That's it. Right. So they'd captured this bad guy who had broken into um, Cash's flat, had shot him um, in the bulletproof vest, which mm-hmm. would have fucking really hurt um, and caused holes in his T-shirt. And immediately, you can't. there are no holes in his T-shirt. You only see the holes in the T-shirt when he's in the police station taking off his T-shirt. He goes, oh, that T-shirt was like $7. But if you look carefully after he shot, there's no bullet holes. And you would have the absolute wind fucking knocked out of you being shot in the chest like that. Um, that kind of given, range as well. At yeah. that range, given it had, had thrown him backwards and the second one had then blown him out of the window, it, that would have really fucking hurt. So that was rubbish, that was. Um, but anyway, even after all of that, they take him back to the station and he goes, oh, let me interview him. And uh, and he's, he strolls into what looks like a locker room where some other cop is just getting changed and the guy's having a piss. Well, hasn't he just been arrested for like attempted murder? I don't, yeah. I don't know anybody who gets arrested who just gets allowed to walk around the police station. Their actual arrest, okay, so being set up and their actual arrest, based on what, really? A tape with their name, that you know, with their voices on it and a gun which has got his print on it. But yeah, yeah and a dead body. Enough, and it, well, and a dead body, yeah. But that that's enough for two highly decorated police officers that have done nothing but serve, but everybody is immediately adamant that they've done something wrong. So, yeah, Bond references. I found, you know, we talked about that already. The drag part, what? I mean, that was a scene added later on, but what, what? You know, and that was a director thing, apparently, because this was the same director that also directed uh, Wild Wild West, because there was something to do with a big spider or something in it, and he got that in in Wild Wild West, but Will Smith also dressed up in drag to dance in Wild Wild West. And uh, both of them, actually, him and uh, Harvey um, uh, Klein, not Calvin Klein. Yeah, Calvin Klein, but not the actor. The, the, uh, the actor is, not Kev- the, is Kevin Kev- Klein. Kevin Klein, yeah. So both of them, he had them dressing up in drag. And there was another film as well where he had the, uh, the, one of the stars dressing up. He had the thing for it. It was fucking weird. And I think probably the final thing really to just talk about um, is the truck. Uh, Jeez. they break into this thing and suddenly all these bloody trucks with men, rocket launchers again it's a bit like Bond were they, were they expecting them were they you know suddenly had all these yeah. massive monster trucks and pickups of rocket launchers that couldn't hit shit <laughs> yeah. you know it was like alright just sat there with the, with the engine running where you're just, just waiting for them must mm. be mate there's a few things about that. One is yeah. the when they actually charge down the gate, they the road is fairly level, flat. Yeah, they on the entrance. Go, yeah, <laughs> and somehow or another they go through the top of it. Yeah, and as and on that scene as well, if you notice, that's supposed to be a four wheel drive van or or truck, car, whatever it is, but four wheel yeah. drive. But as it's in the air, you don't actually see it. The four wheel drive, mm. it's just a regular rear wheel drive or front wheel drive. Um, what the, what's the name of all that fucking stuff? Uh, differential. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see the differentials. Yeah. And when it lands, it's the back of it's on fire. And actually, Stallone had his hair singed as well. Uh, in um, no, that's later on. In, 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 at some point lands. in that scene. But yeah. anyway, the fight, the back of the truck's burning, and then it goes yeah, out, and it goes up and crashes down, and the headlight breaks, and then it comes back on. Mm. Um, it's it's not it's not particularly. I don't think that that whole thing is particularly well done. I think it's a lot of action, a lot of drama. I think it's a very well choreographed sequence, if you like. Um, but the and the big um, sort of quarry um, machinery. Apparently, the director was driving home one day or something and drove past the quarry, saw these massive machines. I thought, oh, they look really cool in the film, mm. so he drew them into the film. Of course, they knew how to drive them as well, which was useful. Yeah. Um, and again, one of the other things as well, with Tango's sister, obviously Terry Hatcher getting captured, kind of his own fault, really, because he had said in front of the old um, uh, Rubenoid, whatever his name was, with a grenade in his mouth, he'd said, oh, were you with my sister? So he's thinking, oh, right, you're letting me go, and I now know you've got a sister I can go and capture. So cheers for that. Lovely. Because the next scene, they've captured his sister. 
So, and I thought to myself, well, you're a fucking idiot because you just told him you had a sister. So, well done. Because you might as well have told him you had a, a wife and three kids you didn't like either. You know, and do them over at the same time. Get rid it's, of them. Yeah, I thought that, well, that was just stupid uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and again, just all the elaborate talk. Uh, when you're frozen down the staircase with the grenade, you can clearly see the grenade is... So whatever's gone off is like way in the corridor. It's not actually him that's exploded, obviously, but the, the stunt wasn't very good. And the explosion at the end with the building, you could tell it was like a line of, you know, a pyrotechnics because it all sort of exploded and the building was still stood behind. And it was a bit of sort of CGI and a bit of, yeah, there were just, you know, ribbons of pyrotechnics just exploding in front of the building to make it look like it was blowing up. That's my post, it's done. Well, Okay, thank you. I, I've got to get, I've got to get one. I've got to get one continuity in there that I thought was quite interesting. That was when Sylvester Sloan jumps onto that cable. He runs off the, oh, edge yeah. of the building, and you see him leap. And and then when he's on the cable, suddenly he's got a belt in his mouth. Yes, yeah. yeah. And and Kurt Russell had a like a tank top on from the front, and then from behind it was a t shirt. Um, <laughs> yeah, and they had these belts, but which they don't issue in prison, they don't offer, offer, you know. Yeah, of course, because you hang yourself with it. Yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff. So is that it then? You done? I'm done, mate. Yeah, all 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 good. All good. Okay. Well, let's get on with Final Thoughts then. What I felt right from the very beginning, with the Rambo bit especially, was that this film knows its audience and it's setting the expectations immediately. It's self-aware... It's kind of taking the piss out of itself. And you know not to take this film seriously within the first sort of five, ten minutes. So I actually quite appreciate that. I thought, yeah, okay, yeah, I know what to expect. And the bullets, I did wonder about that. You know, where he, he empties the cylinder. Yeah. And then loads it back in again. Now, I did some research on that. I thought, yeah, what was that? It's weird, that. Because there was a few people online that were asking the same question. Yeah. Apparently, it's, it's like a, a preactive, uh, a, um, yeah, a, a proactive loading, proactive reloading, or, or also known as a combat reload. So he emptied the shells. He may have had a spent cartridge in there. He may not. He may have two spent cartridges, but he basically emptied it out, loaded it with six. So he knew he had six shots rather than counting in his head. So that's the way that, um, that I read it. it, which is an odd one. It's not unless you. Um, that that is there. true. Yeah, that you, you would reload it so you knew how many shots do you had. I yeah. read it more from the fact that he, it was uh, high caliber rounds or hollow tip rounds, so it was special mm. rounds that he was putting in there. That that's how I, how I saw it. That um, is possible, but then why yeah. would he be carrying them? So, um, you, you could go one way or the other. I suppose. Yeah, you could. You could. Yeah. I prefer my version though. But of course, it, the thing is, again, it comes down to that. Yeah, well, it's more plausible in a way because if you think about it, it's again on that continuity. When he fires those rounds, um, it doesn't break the windscreen, so it clearly isn't plate glass. It clearly is a windscreen windscreen. Um, but of course, when the if you look when the lorry when the truck stops, that there are no bullet holes there. The, no, the glass, is, the glass is it's being replaced with plate or sugar glass for them to the action, yeah, theater, uh, yeah come through. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that always used to crack me up. As a you know, as a very young teenager watching this film, it always used to make me laugh that bit. Um, can anyone figure out why why the fuck um, Kurt Russell had that massive laser sight on that on that Magnum? Was it a Magnum or whatever it was that gun he had? It was fucking enormous. I mean, there was obviously a. Well, what I, I can know. tell you is that when he went to the police station to get that gun out of his drawer, and he said, "Who's been playing around with my sight?" Well, that's a Wolf of PPK, and it doesn't have adjustable sights. I think it's just an 80s thing. Um, didn't Robocop have a big like laser sight on the top? And I remember another film, yes. Blade Runner or something, had big like, big laser sights on the top. But it was proper hefty, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. like running, running at one point, and it was like holding like Predator. this. Predator. Predator 2, Danny Glover had that's a big it. sight on the top of his... Done. That's right. There's obviously an 80s thing, wasn't it? To yeah. Just really emphasise the fact that, hey, I've got a big fucking gun. Um, I felt that Jack Plants, you know, the, the guy playing Yves Perret, I think yeah. a very dramatic actor, actually. I think I quite quite liked that personality. Very dramatic, you know, overly just 
overly emphasizing everything. I mean, Justin, you didn't particularly like that, but I actually felt it gave the character some depth and some interest to it. He also well. made Batman uh, end of that year as well in 89, I think he was in Batman. Well, yeah, this guy was massively into Superman. Then he wanted to recreate Superman because there was a, I saw an image online of, of um, uh, Nicolas Cage in the Superman. Yeah, Nicolas Cage costume. was... Uh, yeah. uh, Running was in the running for the running Superman it, yeah. uh, in the 90s, sometimes yeah. or early 90s. Mm. Great action film, though. It, I mean, even the music, proper 80s, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Got that in one of my Brilliant. notes, definitely. Yeah, that yeah, it's got a real synth. Yeah, to, yeah. yeah. although it's great. Kate, um, although Cash's intro music was a bit shit, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't the best. Well, but he, 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 it's just a bit ridiculous, isn't it? It's like a it's a chips, fucking, wasn't it? Yeah, it's but, like a clown or something in a circus being introduced. Yeah, well, I love Tango's glasses, I often say. I really felt nice that, you know, Tango's character, I felt, was was pretty good. And again, you know, yeah. although he's like a, an uptight kind of stiff with a stockbroker, you can still give the banter. And you know yeah. what I found really quite interesting is Justin, when you said earlier that um, they t- the two of them become good friends on this, it's yeah. obvious. Yeah. Because the banter, I know it's scripted, but I bet a lot of that wasn't scripted as well. It wasn't, no. Yeah. No. So in in fact, a lot of the one-line quips were Sly's um, involvement and a lot of ab-libbing. And apparently the director, did the, a lot of them just sort of said, oh, I can't be fucking bothered to argue anymore. Um, <laughs> and all these all these little one-liners and quipping mm-hmm. things coming in. Yeah, don't panic. I'm not panicking. Yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah, that was good. I, it was obvious, and you kind of you kind of become endeared to the pair of the char- characters in mm. this because they're both ripping the piss out of each other, and especially mm. like in English, you know, in England, as you know, with with you know, like friends, male friends in England, that's what it's all about. You just rip the absolute fucking piss <clears> out of each other, and you form a bond through that. So that really comes across quite strongly in this film and I really appreciate that especially yeah. the court scene you can tell you know I mean, when you think about the pacing of this movie right from the beginning and up to the court scene you kind of get into know the characters they're, they're forced together and they establish a friendship you're yes. kind of with them you're with yes. them you're quite yeah. happy to go along with that you know you, you you feel kind of endeared to them and you want you want a sense of justice you feel that oh fuck these guys you know what you know, they, they haven't done anything wrong. Why the fuck are you stitching them up like this? You kind of yeah. feel like you want to get with them. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, though, um, that's kind of where it falls apart. When when they escape from prison, you've got Cash goes one way, Tango goes the other, and then Cash ends up in that dance. It's not a strip club, is it? It's like a dance. Sort it's of like thing. a cabaret strip, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know what that fucking drumming was about. It was all out of yeah, all that rhythm and stuff, and anyway, um, but the drag bit, yes, the drag bit, um, where he comes out in drag, that was kind of that. That's the the point I felt where this film just completely goes to the shitter. It starts circling the toilet bowl, doesn't it? It really, yeah, it really <laughs> fucks up after that. It's um, it's it's a shame because you're kind of with it and you're willing to put aside the fact that this is a you know a crappy eighties action movie until that point, and you think. Hmm, actually, there's not much coming back from this. And you mentioned earlier, Justin, as well, that the uh, Samira's two is that the director changed and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So perhaps that was a turning point in the script and the director is that we just started to get this ridiculousness thrown in and it kind of goes off the rails. And it's about that time I started losing interest as well. The brain yeah, started, which it was a struggle. It was a struggle from that point on. And uh, it's amazing because actually the budget went up 20 million as well from that point onwards too. See, the other thing was uh, to make us convinced that that guy was actually a proper British, the bad guy or English. They started saying, uh, using uh, words like wanker, you dickhead, and the other uh, sort of English words that we would use. Hmm. But the more he used them, the more his accent got worse. And you're sounding like, a, as I said, um, in between South African and Australian. Well, I, 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 I think some of that also is the fact that when you're trying, I think I've talked about this before, when you've got actors playing um, or, or, or doing accents, so they will they will rely on certain words to pull them back round onto the right accent. 
So it's a bit like if you want to do Australia, Australia, Australia. If you want to do Australian, then you sort of you, and, and you want to get going with it. Then if you sort of glay, mate, you sort of getting your you're getting your tongue rolling into that already. If you don't often speak it, uh, but, so. But I agree with you, jo uh, Justin. But there's certain actors that can do it, and there's certain actors where you just go, mate. If you're American, just use the bloody yeah, American that's accent. Cool. That, that's the point with this. Why? Because yeah. he could, clearly couldn't do it. He needed those key words like, yo, silly wanker. So another mm. one, strange thing, was no uh, sort of Sister Sloan's uh, uh, sort of cellmate. Yeah. yeah. Or made by, I, I only know him from Apollo 13. <laughs> yeah, but he's all... He, do you remember uh, the uh, programme... Um, that bear program where uh, Benji, the bear or something like that. I think it was a it was a uh, well it was a little child basically who was a friend with a bear called Benji. I forgot the name of the program, but he was that child who uh, uh, in the sixties uh, who played that part with McLeod. Right. McLeod was his father. The guy, not McLeod. Yeah, it was yeah McLeod. I think was his father, um, the cowboy police officer. Right. Um, in that. And that was that guy. And but what I found, okay, the spring bit where he was playing with the spring and he chops slinky, the yeah, yeah uh, sort of uh, slinky, which yeah, which yeah. seemed much longer wrapped round him than it did actually. But the, <laughs> but, but the, the funny thing was, or disturbing thing was, okay, he sort of cuts the newspaper into half. That was fine. But when they try to text alone, he's up up on the top of like having a sexual fantasy with Bert or something like that with a tape on his mouth and going. Yeah, like that, like a. I don't know if you noticed that. No. Well, and, yeah, because it was implied that Tango had wrapped him up in it to shut him the fuck up and pinned yeah. him to okay. bed with it. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I thought. What, what, what did What did you think? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, Christ, I, mean, I thought everyone thought that. You know. That yeah. I, I'm not sure. I saw that any other way than no. just. No, I, I, I saw up. it. I saw uh, this guy looked crazy, looked a bit out of it. I thought, and he was he's having a sexual fantasy or something, or having some uh, <laughs> sleazy sort of fantasy while Tango's trying to sleep down. Uh, yeah, the that bottom. She said that actually says more about you, Samir, than yeah, it does. That you've ever said. <laughs> yeah, oh. I think if he was Fuck. laying on his front with a with a hole cut in the mattress, and you know, it might have been a bit different, but. No. Anyway, I don't know where that's going, but we better oh, change the oh, subject. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Move yeah. on quickly, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I thought, yeah, the reason why I felt that way is because that guy was acting a little bit strange when he went into uh, the cell. That's why. Otherwise, I never would have thought, thought that. But I thought this, that guy was weird. And that's well, he why. Was. He, uh, he, yeah. He, 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 was a, he was a killer. He was a murderer. Yeah. And he said, um, certified crazy or something along those lines yeah. which so that explained the odd behavior because he said yeah. that crazy people aren't scared of anyone and no. um tank was just reading the newspaper like whatever <laughs> yeah. and that's why i thought he was being not be uh, having his fantasies while stallone's trying to sleep because of that craziness nothing else and obviously now now you guys looked at it in a different way than i did because i was Try to connect it to his behaviour the right way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. What was it about big fucking four by fours with big wheels and stuff in the eighties? Oh. There was obviously a big thing, wasn't there? It yeah. started off with Fall Guy, I think, uh, in eighty five, eighty six. What's the truck? Right? Ages, uh, because that had massive wheels on it on his uh, sort of open. What is it called? Monster trucks. When they know yeah, yeah. monster trucks, it was a big yep. thing, wasn't it? In the sort of mid eighties, I remember. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Everyone and... loves a monster truck. Another thing that I uh, found a little bit um, strange about this movie, like you know, you say about the court scene. I think the beginning of the movie was really good to that point, and then mm. the sort of going a little bit dodgy in prison. But you know where they've got that a guy with a grenade in his mouth, and they're sort of fighting with each other. You could tell that that was scripted, and it, it looked like they were just forcing it out. I mean, it it looked very amateur in that bit, in my personal opinion. Uh, although I'm not I'm not Oscar winning actor, but I just wasn't convinced that it was looking real enough for me, like you normally would see in a uh, a high end production of Hollywood. Uh, mm. I thought um, 
it was very techy in the end. I just felt it was just all these sort of it was it was just going shit all over the place. <laughs> and I and, and I really really think they wasted a, a last half an hour or so where they go to this guy. Oh, okay, let's pretend to be James Bond. Let's get this trunk. That bit was awful as well. It is odd that wasn't it? I mean, the, and also when you think like Gabriel Cash walks into that research, that LA Police Department's research department, yeah, he walks in there, he walks through all of that right from the you know, yeah, he's right a wanted the, wanted right man, from, yeah, and, and he just yeah, strolls in. I just assume that nobody else knows who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. That was yeah. that was one I didn't bother writing down because I thought it's just. Yeah, somebody, some director or screenwriters just kind of, oh, this might be cool, and mm. they've just gone ahead and done that. Yeah, so, I don't think police departments routinely have experimental weapons departments no, in, the bowels of, in the bowels of their police stations. I, I think that's <laughs> no. It's a simple storyline with a lot of action. It's very fast moving. Yes, there are plot holes and issues, and it's very mm. frantic, uh, and some of it is sort of a bit bizarre. Um, but it was a, it was a smash hit. It was, yeah. it was, but yeah. The reason why I'm being a moany bastard about this, and there's one reason, the first half to, half to the court scene, I thought, you know, I thought, yeah, brilliant, really good movie. There can be something done with this. They can build on this. After that, they, I think, as you say, they lost the plot, and then I personally think they lost the opportunity because they could have had a follow up. They could have a uh, a sequel to it, but I think the ending just made it impossible to do it when you said with the sequel that's interesting because i definitely got a sequel vibe you know when they did the high five and, and um cash does it yeah. with, the, with, with the arm with the bullet hole in supposedly does the high five yeah fuck yeah america team america um i felt at that point that could have easily have indicated that there was going to be a sequel to this mm. yeah i i think i think it's a very easy film to sequel uh to do a sequel to mm. You know, because they're, they're in the same city, either side, you know, policing either side. Um, and it's a bit like Beverly Hills Cop in a way, isn't it? It's, it's very yeah. easy to do another one and do another one. And But uh, there's and a difference in, I think there's also a difference, and I think I have to say this, because you've mentioned Beverly Hills Cops, and I was going to, and there's another one, another 48 hours, another 48 hours. There's one actor in there that can get away with, the comedy, and that's Eddie Murphy. I do not think that Kurt Russell and Sylvester Stallone can necessarily get no, away with that. No, no, no. This mean, is the problem. That's Nick Knowles, isn't it? Or, uh, Nick Nolte, Nick, sorry. Nick Nolte. So Nick yeah. Nolte they're was different... a straight man. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you get what I'm saying. I don't think yeah. either of these guys can get away with what Eddie Murphy did. But this was about a friendship. It wasn't about yeah. somebody taking the piss out of the other one. It was about a friendship developing. Yes. And it could have quite easily have gone on. Yes. to a, a sequel because that friendship the banter and the taking the piss out of each other it would have worked you, you don't need a straight man and a comedian no, for, for that banter the two to, to get on I, I that, that bit i didn't have any problems with whatsoever in this film no. I mean, there was a bit there was some bits where it was a bit over the top and it wasn't particularly funny but the banter between the two characters it worked for me mm. should we score it do we have to yeah okay all right let's <laughs> yeah Um, I'll go first. Um, yeah, go ahead, mate. I can't. I can't give it much more than than a six. Um, it is a great film. Watched it many times. Loved watching it again. Uh, glad we did it. And I think it's nice that we've done it this week because uh, we made reference quite big to it in Tomorrow Never Dies last week. Mm. Um, that that we were going to do it. Uh, and it's just a fun film. It is just a fun film. So, but it's not brilliant. But it is certainly not terrible. Well, it's not um, made in nine. It's made not made in nineteen fifty in black and white, is it? So Samir's going to give it a fucking one or a two or something. <laughs> so. All right. Well, I'll, I'll step in then and I'll say, um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a six two. I, I am the six man. I should have six eleven six. It should be eleven six because I keep giving everything a fucking six. As I said before, six for me is kind of like a, eh, it's all right. And that's how I felt about this film. There were parts in it, a lot of um, nostalgia, because I remember watching this film when I was probably about 12 or 13 in the, in the early 90s, because at that time, um, satellite television 
was becoming a big thing. It was a very, it was a state symbol. You know, if you had a satellite dish on your oh, house God, yeah. in the, in yeah, the early nineties, yeah. you'd fucking yeah. made it. Your, your family yeah. were officially middle class, right? Yeah. I agree so with that. It was around that yeah. time. Yeah. It was around that time and some good memories. Uh, and I particularly enjoyed um, Yazoo in this. Alison yeah. Moyer singing that song um, in, the, in the dance club. I thought, you don't hear Yazoo in movies. You don't hear it, but you hear it in this one. Mm -hmm. So it's a different plus. I know Justin said I'm going to give it a minus five or something like that. No, I wasn't actually. I'm going to give it a six as well. There's a reason why I'm giving I it a six. I feel there's peer pressure at play there, to be honest. <laughs> no. No, no, I, no, no. I feel that's not a genuine, honest what you were going to give this film. I think, I think you're, you're avoiding slander yeah, here. You, you can see your arsehole tightening up right now. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I didn't yeah. want to give it a six. I didn't want to give it a yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, no, okay, guys, that is my real score. Seriously, okay. Okay. good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, six, there's a reason for it because the starting was amazing. You two gave it a six. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have been, you never know, I could have even gone high. You never know, I might have enjoyed it more than I'm saying. But anyway, mm. um, I give it a six because it had a good start. I thought the ending or the last 20, 30 minutes really let it down. But then again, as you say, it was a typical 80s action movie. Benta was good. I agree with you there, Paul. But I just feel that the partnership was not as strong as it could have been if it was done slightly differently. Another mm. thing is, Silver so Saloon playing this guy. He was a stockbroker sort of style person. Yeah, the suits and glasses and that. Yeah, he looked good in those. But at the same time, it's Sylvester Stallone. We're not used to seeing Sylvester Stallone in them sort of parts. We normally see him as the action man in films like Cobra, Rambo, etc. So it was nice to see him do something different. Kurt Russell, he's a sort of a mixed sort of actor, I always find, sort of thing. Yes, he's played Elvis, which says one thing. So that he's a uh, you know, he's pretty diverse in his sort of sort of acting skills. So, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think the comedy bits didn't work too well in certain areas. And that's why I think I'm giving it a six because of the second half of the movie, which was mm. weak. OK, well, then that's our scores. And that's, um, that's another movie review in the bag. Cash. OK. Well, we'll talk about what we're going to do next week. Yeah, off off air, and uh, we'll surprise you with the social media stuff. You'll uh, you'll know as soon as we know. Um, yeah, it's interesting mentioning social media regarding this because I did put out some uh, sort of teaser images and questions and stuff on Instagram and Facebook, and and the the overwhelming response I got on that was that people love this movie. They have fond yeah. fond memories of this movie. It's widely enjoyed. Yeah, which is surprising to me, actually. I was expecting a lot of people to say, oh, it's a pile of shit. Why are you reviewing that? Something like I said to you uh, before, as a kid, I really enjoyed it. And I really did enjoy it. And, I, and my memories were very different to what I saw today. And I think it's just you change with maturity, with age, etc. Um, you love the action, don't you? Speak for yourself, mate, to be quite honest. <laughs> I still like farts and burps, so... Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that, right? Because you say you said you enjoyed it as a kid. I said yeah. I enjoyed it as an early teenager. A lot of the people on social media were saying that they loved it as a kid. This film was an 18 rated movie, was it not? Or, it um, or <laughs> yeah. R rated in America. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why the fuck were we all watching it? Why do we well, all love it? This film was made for adults. Yeah. Let's wrap this one up and then spot up. Yeah. Okay. But if you've enjoyed this review, then why not hit that little thumb icon and give us a like because it helps us out and it helps the channel out with the YouTube algorithm. And give us a subscribe as well because we've got a nice little back catalogue now of 80s and 90s movies and even early Bond stuff from the 60s. We've got a nice little back catalogue now that you can go through and binge watch if you want. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the usual suspects. Um, we also upload to BitChute odyssey rumble so if you don't like youtube you can watch us there as well um i always struggle with these bits and how to end it anyone else want to say anything yeah uh so three as of today 321 subscribers so thank you to mm. all of those people who have subscribed and i do hope that you 
enjoy what we do. Um, as always, you know, comment, like, subscribe, you know, hit the little bell button that does something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, but no, thank you to everybody. Um, I'm glad people are enjoying it. At least that's what we hope anyway. Yeah. I reckon people just subscribe just because they fucking hate us and they're just wishing cancer upon us. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. I do get an itchy arsehole from time to time. Maybe that's prostate cancer. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there's not much left to say, but uh, goodbye. So goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Thank you, chaps. Goodbye from me. Thank you.